I'd say if he's been floating, he's actually been floating for, for quite a while because that looks like sunburn. It does. Doesn't the sun's it? almost bleached the, the top, and, and this, this shell is obviously not used to being exposed to direct sunlight constantly. Yeah. So he's trying to dive down. He is. So each time he does, he inevitably comes back up. We're actually starting to get a bit of pus there. Oh. So it looks like he does actually have a bit of an infection sitting underneath that shell there. You know it's a different kind of house call when the footwear of choice is thongs. Chris has flown to Gladstone on Queensland's central coast. He's responding to an unusual emergency. Hey, how are you? Good, thank you. I'm Chris. Nice to meet you. My name's Kimberly. Hey, Kimberly. All right, you got a turtle for me to say? Certainly do. His name's Roger. Okay, <laughs> that's good. Roger, a seven-year-old green sea turtle, is waiting for Chris at the Coin Island Rehabilitation Centre. How far to the island? It's about 15 minutes across the harbour. Okay. Like the James Bond of the turtle world. It's quite a ride. Right, which way's Roger? Ah, oh, he's right over here. Is that him struggling at the top there now? That's him. We found him a few days ago. He was floating in the mouth of the Boyne River and he was just of concern as he was floating and unable to dive under the water. Roger is one of a growing number of Australian sea turtles suffering from a devastating condition. Floater disease is a really mysterious issue in turtles right now. We don't truly know what causes it. It's believed to be related back to malnutrition, just not getting enough food and having a weakened immune system, but also it could be caused by a blockage in their gut, causing a gas buildup or infection. So he's trying to dive down. He is. So each time he does, he inevitably comes back up. Because they can't dive, they're unable to get down to the bottom of the water and feed on seagrass or feed on anything in that case. Otherwise, they're just stuck at the top with no food. Unless Chris can find a solution, Roger won't survive. So I guess with, with no food, plus having to work so hard to try to get food, that has become underweight, plus blown up. It's a pretty sad case. Yeah. Once a turtle starts to float, life becomes pretty perilous because they're at risk of being hit by boats, they can't feed themselves, and predators can just take their pick. I'd say he's, he's had a real struggle. I mean, he's lucky that he actually got in here at some stage because his days would have been well and truly numbered. Definitely. Chris is at the Coin Island Turtle Rehabilitation Centre off Gladstone in Queensland. Look at that towel. <laughs> his patient is Roger, a seven-year-old green sea turtle with floater's disease. I'd say if he's been floating, he's actually been floating for, for quite a while because that looks like sunburn. The sun's almost bleached the, the top, and, and this, this shell is obviously not used to being exposed to direct sunlight constantly. No. So it gets these little burnt areas. The condition causes gas to build up in the gut and body cavity, making the turtle buoyant. Roger is then unable to dive and feed off the seagrass on the ocean floor, leading to starvation and dehydration. My hope today is to try to give Roger some sort of helping hand. And the best way to do that, it seems, is to take out some of this air to allow him to swim a bit more freely and hopefully then rest and recover. I'm just going to sit this needle in there. OK. Removing air from both sides of Roger's body is crucial for his survival. It's like deflating a lilo at the moment. <laughs> OK, now it's stopping. OK. So that's 240 mils on this side. Wow. So that explains why he has been having trouble swimming around. Chris now needs to extract air from the other side of Roger's body. And quite a bit, so straight away we've got 20 mils. Just keeps on going. So all up, 340 mils. It's about the size of a Coke can's worth of air. Wow. So that is a decent size floaty to have inside you. Definitely. While there is no more air coming out, Chris does make a shock discovery. I'll pull this needle out now. 
We're actually starting to get a bit of pus there. So it looks like he does actually have a bit of an infection sitting underneath that shell there. There are so many unknowns with this floater disease, but it looks like at least one of them has been solved. We know where this gas is coming from. Rogers picked up an infection underneath his shell with a type of bacteria that produces gas. Now it's a matter of hitting it hard with antibiotics. Okay, in it goes. Okay, Rog. I'm gonna go for a swim now. Let's see if it's a bit easier. With the underlying infection treated, it's now time to see whether Roger is fit to return to the water. Taking out all that gas, it's got to make swimming a little bit easier for Roger. But whether he's got the strength to really force himself to the bottom, we're about to see. Ooh, like a parent before its child's first swimming lesson. <laughs> Nervous. At the Coin Island Turtle Rehabilitation yeah, Centre, seven-year-old Roger has just had more than 300 mils of air removed from under his shell. Hopefully, in the nicest possible way, you think... His survival now depends on whether he can dive and remain submerged in the water. If he can't, he has no future in the wild. OK, Rog, aim for the bottom. Take a dive, Roger. There we go. It's more like it. The breath and down we go. Excellent. A lot better. It's looking good. When he finally hits the water, the important thing is he's not floating with his back up in the air and also he can stay underwater. It's a big change. It will be several more months of rehabilitation before Roger regains his full strength, but a future in the wild is now possible. The solution to floating turtles is never a quick or an easy one, but at least today we've seen a start and pretty soon he should be back swimming, not the pool, but in the ocean. And down he goes. Start, huh? Job well done, I believe. <laughs>